In this tutorial, we're going to cover many-to-many -many relationships. In this video is part of a series on MySQL, and it's a, basically a crash course on how to get up and running with SQL so you can build out the database app portion of your applications. So if you're learning to code, this will be a good crash course to help you get started with the database. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out the rest of the series by clicking on the links. And the difference between many-to-many -many and one-to-many is that with a one-to-many, you have a column for a foreign key inside of one of the tables. But how would that work with a many-to-many -many relationship? Because, for example, if you had a students and teachers relationship, you'd have many students or in many classes or many teachers classes and many teachers have many students. So which table would the foreign key go into? And the easiest way to make a many-to-many -many relationship is to have a third join a table where you just have the foreign keys inside of the column or inside the table. So let's go ahead and create some tables and data and we'll demonstrate this. So the first thing we'll do is create the students table and insert some student data into it. And I've got a separate database here for this. For this. And so we'll go ahead and do that. There you go. And then we will create the teachers table with some teachers data. Okay, so we're all set up and now we just need to create the join table. And there's a lot of different ways to create a foreign key relationship between two tables. And we're gonna do this incorrectly the first time just to demonstrate how the relationship works. And then at the end, I'll show you some problems with this setup and how to fix it. So we'll just go ahead and create another, a, a student's teacher's table. And then we're gonna have the student ID in one column and then the teacher ID in the other column. And we're gonna go ahead and add these relationships. These numbers just represent the relationships. Paste that in and there you go. And now we have uh, three different tables. And so take a look at how these tables are connected. So we can see this middle table is the, what connects everything together. So if you wanted to determine which students are in which classes and which teachers have which students, you just look at this table here. So we've got a student ID of one. So that means this is representing Alex. And then we've got the teacher ID of one over here. So Mrs. Troper. So Alex is in Mrs. Troper's class. And then if we go down here to student ID number two, we can see that student ID number two is for Caroline and she is in the teachers with the teacher ID of five and four. So that means Caroline is in Mr. Rogers class and Ms. Roosevelt's class. So that's basically how these relationships are set up. You just follow them across. So teacher ID uh, three, three for Mr. Edwards and I hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. So in order to create a many-to-many -many relationship, oh, well, we have the many-to-many -many relationship, but now we just need to join the tables together in order to get the data that we need. So in order to do the join, let's just take it one step at a time. It's exactly what you do in the one-to-many relationship, only you have one extra table to join together. So let's go ahead and start at the left with the students table, and then we'll just join the students underscore teachers table to the students table. So to join these tables together, we do exactly like what we did in the one-to-many tutorial. So we would do select, and let's just get all the columns for now. So we'll do from students, and so that means students will be left side table. From So select all the columns from the students table, and we'll enter join the students teachers table on the students tables student ID equal to is equal to the students teachers dot student ID and that should be it so let's go ahead and run that 
And now we've got a joined together table where the student's table and the student's teacher's table is joined together into one table. So now we have all the students joined together with their teacher's ID. So we can see that Alex here, so Alex is once, twice, three times. He's seen here in this table three times. And he's taking uh, teacher ID number two, three, and one, their classes. So we just have, in order to figure out what teacher that actually is, we just have to join the teacher's table based on the teacher ID column. So that's all we have to do now. So I'm going to take the query that we just ran because we were almost there already. And now we just have to do another inner join. So now we're going to join, do inner join, and we're going to join the teachers table on the students teachers dot teacher ID is equal to the teachers dot teacher ID. And I'm going to go ahead and so if you can see right here, we've got the teacher ID from the student's teacher's table and the teacher ID from the teacher's table. So we're just joining the tables together based on these matching columns. So that's all we're doing. And so we're doing inner join. And if we run this query now, copy it. Now we've got everything we need. So we've got the student, the name, the teacher ID, and the class, or the, the teacher's name, their gender, their age, and the class that they're teaching. So we've got all of the information we need by joining these two tables together. So, um, so yeah, we're all set up, and now it's just a matter of not grabbing all of the information, you know, only grabbing the useful information. So. If we only need the student's name and the teacher's name, we can just do students.name and teachers.name. And that'll give us only the information that we need. So we're all set up, and that's basically how you join tables together with many-to-many -many relationships and how you use them. And you need to make sure that you set up the table correctly because if you do something like this, where you don't actually have a foreign key defined in the table, then we have some potential problems. So for example, let's say we delete a student. He graduates or something like that, you know, and the student goes away. So we delete the student, He's and he's got the student ID of one, right? So he's gone. And now if you look at the student's underscore teachers table, you'll, still, you'll see that his ID is still here. So it still looks like this student who doesn't even exist anymore is in these classes. So we need to fix that so the tables will be updated and correct no matter what you do with the other tables. So instead of just making a call a, a table with the student ID and a teacher ID as integers, we actually need to make sure that they're set as foreign keys. And so you can do that with this, these words or this uh, settings here, and you can use foreign key, and then you tell the, tab the table which column is the foreign key. So in this case, we're setting the student ID column to be a foreign key, and it the student ID column references the student ID in the student's table, and then we're setting an option here for on delete cascade, which is in the manual, and then we're setting the teacher ID to the to be a foreign key, and it's referencing the teacher ID in the teacher's column, and then on delete cascade, and then we're setting a primary key here for ID, uh, and the reason you set the primary key for ID is if you or if you go back to your PHP my admin, you'll notice that uh, we can delete these rows here, but we cannot delete these rows, and that's because there's no primary key. So if you add a primary key, that makes it easier to manage. And then as far as this on delete cascade, this will allow us to delete the relationship records 
when a student is deleted. So if you were to delete a student in the students table, then all of the student underscore teachers row, <clears throat> rows that are related to that student, they will also be deleted. But if you set it to something like no action or restrict, and you try to delete a student when there's um, other rows in the database that are related to that student, it won't even let you delete that student. So if you were to have restrict or no action, then you would actually have to delete, in order to delete student, um, student number one, or the student with a student ID of number one, you'd have to delete all of the records where student ID of one is, um, is in the table. So we'd have to delete this record here, we'd have to delete this record, and we'd have to delete this record before we could delete that student. So, um, so you want to be careful and, and think about which setting you, you want to use. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to copy and paste this code here. We're actually going to delete the students underscore teachers table. And then I'm going to create it again, but I'm going to use this setting and so with on delete cascade and hit go. And I have to repopulate the data. Okay, so it's been repopulated and I'll hit go. And now because these tables are all connected to each other and the database is actually aware that they're related, it's not even going to let me add this query. And the reason for that is because in the students table, I deleted uh, stu the student with the student ID of one. And so here I am trying to add a student that doesn't exist to a class. So in order to actually run this query, I have to get rid of all of the students with a student ID of one, because there is no student ID, there is no student with a student ID of one. So once we get rid of it, then if we try to run the code, now it'll let us add uh, our students. And then finally, because we have this uh, association between these two tables, or between these three tables, now if I delete a student or a teacher, then all of that information will be um, deleted accordingly. So if I delete a student here from the students table, uh, let me find a student with the ID, well, so let's delete Mary with a student ID of three. Let's take a look at the students teachers table and we can see uh, the student ID with the student ID of three here. And there's probably another one somewhere. Okay, so let's go ahead and delete student ID, the person with a student ID of three. So we'll delete Mary. And now we can see in the student's teachers, there's nobody with a student ID of three. Because when we deleted the student out of this table, it deleted all of the relationships that that student had as well, because the student doesn't exist anymore. And so the same thing with the teachers. If we delete the Mrs. Student ID, or the teacher ID of one, or the teacher with the teacher ID of one, is going to delete all of those relationships. So we're not going to have a teacher ID of one anywhere in this table because we have it set up. And so if we were to do, instead of using on cascade delete, or on delete cascade, if we were to use on delete set null, then it would allow those null values. Um, it would set those, it would set these rows to null instead of deleting them. So that's basically just how you how you can set up the relationships. And unfortunately, you I mean you do have to play with it a little bit yourself and just figure out what it is you're trying to do with your database and then set it up accordingly. So I hope I hope that helps um, helps you set it up. And if not, just check out the tutorial here and play around with it 
and I hope that it helps. Have a good one. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out the website truthseekers.io for more tutorials and recommended books and other stuff. So have a good day. See you later.